Good morning, everybody. It is springtime and it's time to transplant. Don't wait too long because it's gonna be too late before you know it. Speaking of late, I'm late this morning, so let's get going. And today on this morning's commute, we are going to talk about transplanting woody plants and shrubs, perennials and whatnot. We're gonna talk about food forests a little bit in this episode of the All Around Growth Podcast. Good morning, everyone. This is episode number 121 of a show that helps provide insight and tools to build the life and homestead of your dreams. At least that's my intent, to talk about things like that because that is what I am doing. And I hope that if you're listening to this, you're doing that as well. My name is Rob Kaiser and I am your host. Like I said, the title of today's show is Spring Transplanting and the Food Forest. Now, it's Monday, March 29th, 2021. Uh, that's my coffee cup. We're gonna have a coffee together as well because uh, I slept in this morning, stayed up a little late last night and um, didn't even get my coffee in this morning. Running, running around like a wild man. It is the springtime. And I did a lot of work on the homestead this weekend wanted to do some more. I want to spend more time here. I look forward to the time when I am actually generating a portion of my income from this land. And uh, I guess in a sense, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that today because part of, part of the dream that I've had with the plants that I was handling this weekend were to do that, but my approach has been off and I will undoubtedly touch on part of that during today's discussion. But hopefully the focus can be on the plants themselves with some tips about transplanting in the springtime and why this is important or beneficial as opposed to later in the year. And, you know, there we'll have some discussion about spring transplanting versus fall transplanting. All right. So <clears throat> why not start with that since I didn't even include that in the show notes, spring versus fall and the two schools of thought there. Um, you know, I've worked in the green industry for 20 some years now. And ultimately, I am of the opinion that you can transplant anything at any time, provided you do a good job. And it's as simple as that. If you know the material you're working with, you know how to handle it, and you know what it's capable of, then you can transplant anything at any time, but I wouldn't recommend it. So right now, in the springtime, here in Northeast Ohio, USDA Zone 5B, we are transplanting. I'm, I'm going to skip over that spring versus fall because um, I'll get to that later, maybe. So, because I want to get to the plants that I transplanted and why I decided to do it this weekend. And I kind of lucked out this weekend because my brother is out of town with his family. Um, some of the people that are and have been helping us on the commercial kitchen construction project 
We're also out of town. And, uh, excuse me, and basically had the day off on Saturday, which allowed me to direct some of my time, effort, and energy into transplanting, which is good because in the springtime, there are certain trees that bud out and begin flowering sooner than others, and begin leafing out sooner than others. And those are the ones that you want to transplant first. For example, your pears. You know, your pears are beginning to flower. And whereas your sugar maples and some other maples um, are not even, the buds aren't even swollen yet. Amelanch, your service berries, they're flowering now. Um, lilacs are budded out strongly. Uh, a lot of crab apples, different types of, of, of apples as well, fruiting apples. Um, those are some of the first, you know, trees and, and uh, I'll, I'll just speak trees because I'm driving past our competitor's field now and uh, that's, you know, th this is the industry that I work in. Um, I'm also noticing the elderberries are starting to push now as well and I've got some of those in the, the food forest as well. So let's talk about what I ended up transplanting. So I have, over the years, I've, I've, I've had plants in all sorts of areas. Up front, by the, the gardens, um, and that's, I followed suit, that's where my parents first planted some trees, so I planted some stuff up there. And then I planted some stuff in the back in what was going to be an educational garden that I had discussed with my mom. And then I finally began the installation of what will hopefully be a food forest in the future, a permaculture food forest with rows spaced 20 feet apart in a key line type design. More on that later. But because things were pushing and I had a day off, I decided to take advantage of it. And last year for my dad, I ended up buying a four in one pear and a four in one cherry. I transplanted both of those from the future educational garden. Uh, into the food forest and these beds on contour or parallel to a bed on contour or slightly off contour anyways there's also a couple varieties of elderberry that I transplanted a variety of, uh, called John's and one called Lacinata I also had transplanted some goji berry because the area that one of the areas where a lot of these plants were planted years ago was wet and the goji berry really didn't take all that well there. So yeah, uh, they were almost dead. Hopefully they do better in their new home. It's also a valerian plant, I believe, that Jim Collins gave me. Now, this is a plant that I'm not familiar with, but it is a very cool plant, one that I'm definitely interested in because of the seizure medication that I didn't take this morning. Ah, cripes. Anyways, um... The seizure medication that I take is a synthetic derivative of this plant, valerian. The medication that I take is uh, valeric acid, otherwise known as Depakote. 
and that is what I take for seizures. Now, there were also a few sugar maple saplings that were transplanted in this bed as well. Long story on those, bought those for my sister's wedding so she and Luke could transplant one themselves and then transplant it into their new house. So I am helping them with these. They had taken dirt from two areas, you know, transplanted this thing together. Nice, cool little story. Um, now I also had some apple seedlings that I bought a few years ago. Anatonovka apple seedlings. Now, in theory, this sounds really cool. These are apples from seed from the oldest apple trees. You know, the Anatonovka apples from wherever, in, right? Like Kazakhstan or something. And, you know, there was a lot of chatter a few years ago. There probably still is. They just kind of got out of these circles. There was a lot of chatter about these apples just being all that because they're grown from seed and they're like the native apple. Well, my experience with these things is they suck, okay? I live in Northeast Ohio. The, the soil is heavy clay here and these trees don't grow well. Anatonovka sucks here. So if you've got heavy clay soils, don't grow this plant. It's just not a good fit. Um, there's a bunch of M111 rootstock available that is for heavy clay soil. And uh, that's what I'm going to use when I grow apples, if I grow apples. I've also got some sea berry in there that I bought because it was cool a few years ago, you know, not, uh, again, doesn't seem to be growing well here. Chestnut, hazelnut also don't seem to be growing well here, but I bought them because that's what people were buying. That's what people were growing. And all this time for the past few years, I have not been following my own dreams, doing the things that make the most sense for me in the context of my own life. And accordingly, uh, I got burnt out and had some struggles and challenges finding my passion uh, over the past few years. And, uh, you know, this, this, this podcast is a result of that, basically, trying to figure it all out on the commute to the day job. So as I, you know, make up this last leg here, uh, it's very much on my mind and I got to enjoy some of this food forest in the way that I'm constructing it with these, you know, swales on contour, so to speak. Um, and in line with one another. You gotta bear with me as I navigate my way around these semi trucks and customers that are getting loaded. Like I said, I'm a little late. It's 7.45 a.m. right now and it's on, baby. Got semis at the loading dock. Another one lined up. Customers here picking up trees, getting loaded up. It's on, springtime has sprung my friends, springtime has sprung. So yesterday, <clears throat> you know, I grabbed lunch or brunch rather with my, with my girlfriend and, um, sneak around here. Yep. And, um, I was explaining to her what I had done, some of the work that I'd done and it had rained and swale number one had filled up with water because it is 
on contour and when it floods it moves water into the other the next swale that's parallel to that so there was there were birds in there there was a lot of frog activity and <clears throat> i was just enjoying this new wildlife habitat that was created as a result of the swales that were created to facilitate healthy growth and development of this future food forest and you know I may not know what I'm doing and I may not feel like I know what I'm doing but I've put a lot of thought into this and it was nice to see some results of the work that had been done over the past few years and I look forward to seeing the results of what will come over the next few years, especially with a little bit more thoughtful and deliberate planning that goes into it instead of just the mishmash thrown together work that was largely done as a result of trying to throw together some things real quick based on the ideas and life that's led by someone else instead of following your own passion and your dreams and finding what works best for you in your own circumstance and context. And that is what I did and that is not what I recommend. So anyways, that's it for today's show. Hopefully it was of value to you. If you have some questions on transplanting, if you have some feedback on transplanting or any of the plants that I listed off, if you're growing them, how they're growing for you, uh, if you have any suggestions for me, anything plant related or related to transplanting, food forests and the like, drop them my way all around growth at gmail.com or join the community t.me slash all around growth as well and check in with us there. There's links to all the episodes in the show notes as well. And if you want to support the podcast, you can go to the show notes, follow the link to click, click at rate and review the podcast. That'll take you to Apple Podcasts, where most of the listening is happening at this point in time on March 29th, 2021. So... Anyways, thanks for listening. Join the community, t.me slash allaroundgrowth. This is Rob Kaiser, and thank you.